Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey, tea sippers. So it's good to be back. I know I haven't made a solo. Well, not a solo. Let me see. I have somebody with me, but I haven't done just a regular podcast in, um, in about a week or so, so it feels really good to be back. And I have Miss Jeanne with me here. So she is in the building, and we're going to be talking about just a wide range of stuff that's going on on social media, in the world today. So go ahead and reintroduce yourself to the audience, uh, Jeanne. Hello, tea sippers and everyone out there. Thanks for having me back. Um, we always do have great discussions, so I'm definitely looking forward to the topics on the table today. No, definitely. It's been so much going on, you know, um, just all around the world in general, but, you know, specifically in Nigeria with the whole SARS movement, um, the police, the corruption I don't know if you saw the videos mm. that I posted today on Instagram um, where they found just mountains of food. I don't know if you got a I chance to see, see that. I did see that. Yeah, I'm just waking up over here on my side of the world. And, you know, every time I wake up in the morning, because it's evening on you guys' side, I'm like, I'm scared to even open my phone and my computer to see what has happened. And just to come in and wake up and see there was just these treasure troves of food. Um, I think it was in the Oba of Lagos' palace or stock area or something like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Like, these people are suffering. And I know this firsthand because I know people who are from Lagos and from our surrounding areas. I just had a friend who left um, an eastern state Uh, who are faring a little bit better, but just made it back to the States. And these people are suffering. And you hold food back like that? Like, I don't don't understand. I I don't understand. I really don't. Yeah, even the woman who found all that money. And it's like, bless her heart for blasting that to the world. You know, hopefully she stays safe. But she found... Where did she find that? Where was that at? I think part of that was from that when they went into those warehouses to go get food. Some of the bags contain no. money. Yeah. That they're just hoarding money, mm. you know, and they're because there's really they don't trust the banks. You, you <laughs> nine job bank. I you mean, go deposit some money. Yeah. You better hope and get your money back. So a lot of times they just hoard this. That's why I was saying that at this point, I really feel like this is not even so much, you know, a physical war that's brewing, you know, mm. like a physical civil war. I feel like mm. this is even on a spiritual level, what's being done right now to people is very demonic. I mean, just think about it, right? So let's just, let's, let's take it to the simplest level. Okay. You and your husband, you guys lose your job. Y'all have two kids, no income coming in. And right now there's literally no food in your household, right? You right. have no food in the pantry. You're stressed. You're telling me this every day. I'm listening to you stress about, you know, you guys are down to your last can of beans, last bag of rice. And meantime, in my household, I have a whole pantry full of stuff, food, everything. Mm-hmm. And I just sit there and just watch you guys suffer and figure out how you guys are going to be able to try and get food. So at its basic level, that's wrong. Like that's effed up. Because as a human being, right. if you're talking to somebody and you're and they're telling you their problems, what you're going through, that human empathy kicks in like, oh, my God, girl, if you're going through that, come to my house. I can go shop in my pantry or here. Let me go ahead and send you some money or let me bring you some groceries. That's just when that humanity chip kicks in. So, you know, to mm-hmm. see somebody do this on a grand scale to me, it's not even negligence or incompetence anymore. It's demonic. When the UN, it's it's evil. Yeah. Yeah. When the UN, because what people don't understand, 
you know, like in countries like Nigeria and in, in other countries, yes, they do have grocery stores, but most people still shop in the village. Everything is an open mm-hmm. market. So when COVID hit, it really hit those type of countries hard. Like mm-hmm. here, when we shut down, we were still allowed to go to Walmart and, you know, whatever grocery st- store to go get our groceries, right? But in places right. like that, when they shut down, they shut down the markets. They People could not leave their homes. They shut everything down. So what the UN and other um, people did is basically say, okay, so these people who live in this, com- uh, in this country, in this type of environment, will set aside food, will give their governments food for the people so they don't have to worry about going to the market and, and killing goats and, you know, right. doing all that stuff. So that's what that was for. And- All of this stuff was sent to Nigeria back in April when they shut down literally the world. So what's crazy is that some of the food is spoiled. So even though somebody Mm -hmm. said something about the date, and there is a there is a timeline, and just think of the environment um, and what little uh, pests can Mm -hmm. seep into the food. And not not make it um, edible. I mean, just the, just just that. But then the fact that you would, I, I don't understand. And and I've talked to some of my Nigerian friends, um, and and have talked to them and asked them questions. Um, some of them dismiss this as like, oh, it's a, it's another situation. Or um, some say, oh, go back home. You guys are sitting in the armchair in the Americas or in Western Europe or somewhere, why don't you go back home and do something? And that's kind of hard to say. But I just don't understand what could compel somebody to be so distant emotionally, to be so wicked, to see back, sit back and watch people suffer. And I guess it's because of the environment of everybody dog eats dog or um, not literally, but, you know, it's about me and mine and I'm going to mm-hmm. take from everybody else. And that's because when you're in a society that systemically has poverty and this goes back and we always have to look at history. And I I don't think that people, um, when they sit back and criticize situations that are going on, they don't look at and don't even understand the historical ramifications of what brings things to the forefront today. And I don't understand how people could consciously talking about I'm Nigerian, be proud, be this, but then they sit there, they're hoard food, they send their kids out the country on billions of dollars to the best schools, mm-hmm. and they leave their countrymen there to rot and to die. And Nigeria is just one example. But it's, it's, this is the state of the world that we're in. Yeah. I mean, like, I had to go online because I was curious, and I went to this um, Carnegie, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, I think I'm saying it right. And on the website, it said, as of October... There were 100 significant anti-government protests worldwide. And there were over 30 governments who had fallen as a result. This is not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And then they show a map. And you look at the map, and it's just all greened out. And if you look at it, it's a significant. If we have 192 countries, 192 established UN-recognized nations, and you're saying that there's over 100 significant protests that's more than half the world's countries dealing with some type of armed rebellion against this government mm-hmm. I, I mean let's sit there and think about that for a second right. and i think covid has really made people just say we're tired they've had time to sit back watch they don't see their lots improving their families are hungry their kids can't go to school their businesses are closing And people are like, enough is enough. Yeah. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. And that's the thing. I know me and another um, Nigerian influencer, we were talking yesterday in the DMs. And what people don't realize, especially the older generation, right? So, like, our moms, our grandmothers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This is, they dropped the ball. Let's just call it what it is. Mm -hmm. The older generation dropped the ball so bad that, they didn't even bother to teach many of the kids Yoruba. You go there, most kids only speak English, even in Nigeria. So they dropped the ball so bad trying to assimilate. And, of course, everything goes back to colonialism. 
So they knew what they were doing mm-hmm. when they when they kept the North, you know, in power because they could use them as puppets because they weren't as educated as the Nigerians in the South, like the Igbos and especially mm-hmm. the Yorubas. So a lot of stuff goes back to colonialism, but the the elders, they dropped the ball. But like me and the other lady were talking about in the DMs and we're saying that this is a different energy. OK, the youth, I they're not backing down. I agree. They're not backing mm-hmm. down and they're willing to die. What's up? Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In or Anchor FM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the next video.